This is Nathan Stanford Sr. and we're going to look into how you can install Adobe Cold Fusion. What you do is you go to this website, adobe.com slash products slash cold fusion dash family dot html. You click on this try now. There's a few of them. There's try now. There's free trial. Click on try now. Then you would normally fill out a form, this form here, and sign up. And then once you've finished signing up, you're able to download the version that you want to test. So if you look in here, um, at, let's see here, you can pick, um, here you can pick Windows or Linux or Mac. So you can pick whichever version you need, and then you can download it. So once you finish with the download, you'll have a file like this right here, an executable. And this is one I downloaded in the past. So let's double click on it and act like we're going to install it so that I can go through the steps of how you can install it for you. Okay, now that that's downloaded and it started through the install process, it pops up with this here. You can read all this information and read what it says. Then you can go to the next step, installation use, and it gives you the software agreement. You can read through it, and then if you accept it, you can go forward. Then here, when you get to this spot, if you're buying it, you can put in a serial number. If you want to just to try it out for 30 days, you can do that. But if you're doing this for development purposes so that you can be training, so that you can create code, learn Cold Fusion, so that you can use it for a job, you simply select Developer Edition. Then you click Next, and now it gives you a couple different choices. Uh, I usually just leave the default right now, and then I go on to next. And here, I don't know for sure what all they're wanting to say, but I always change it to development because I'm doing it just for me for development purposes at home. So I hit next, um, development profile. Um, I don't need it to be hit from anybody outside of my development environment. It's just for me, for my own sake. Hit next and here I can leave these checked or not checked I tend to just leave whatever they've checked hit next accept the add-on services I am NOT going to be remoting into this it's going to be on this machine I'm going to be working from this machine and then I hit next now it's noticed that I already have the service that's fine next now it's asking for a directory and I don't remember, let's see here, I, this is the path I have now. So it's going to say, where would you like to add, add on services? I just would go through here and click next on all of these. That's currently the name of this particular machine. I click next. Content root is in C Fusion. that's correct. I put in the password that I'm going to use. I don't know if it'll let me skip it. It won't. Okay. So you have to put in a password. Hold on. Let's do this. And then this. Put in your confirm password and then hit next now here I'm not going to enable RDS because that's where I would remote into this from some other machine I'm not going to be doing that I'm literally going to use here and yes there's some other things it can do but I'm not going to be needing that automatically check for server updates, I usually leave it on even for my development box, whether it actually does that or not. I hit next. Now, if I hit next, 
if I hit install, it will install. I'm not going to do that here because I already have 2023 installed. But you would want to go ahead and install, and it would run and install. The very first time you finish, you want to open up the cold fusion page, and I believe it has a checkbox you can say um, to whether to open it or not. When you do, it does some more installation things behind the scenes. So you do want to do that. So I'm going to close this. And once you've got that open, one of the places it will take you is to, once it finishes, is to the local host 8500, because that's the default if you don't already have this installed. If you've got it already installed and you want two versions of it, you're going to have to have a different number than the port 8500. So you'll come here. Now, I have logged the password not put in here so I can get in and out um, because this is just my local machine. I do not have everything updated. That's what these stars are up here. This here is where you can add your data sources. There's a lot of other stuff in here. You might want to look through all of this. When you get a cold fusion job as a programmer, it kind of depends on where you're working. If you're working a small shop or a place where you're the only programmer, you're going to have to know how to do all of this. But most shops are going to have uh, network administrators or higher up people who run the server and you may not even have permissions to get here. Uh, you may not have permissions to go in because the password will be set. But you need to know how to do this for your local machine. At least be able to do this portion to add a data source. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop here. That You've learned how to install Cold Fusion. That's all this first video is about. So let me stop here. Happy coding.